Flagging our colors high, a symbol of national pride. One university for our people, UTT. Educating, creating entrepreneurs, ready for the world. Top training, engineering, for endeavors untold. UTT, best in biosciences. Fashion and the arts, UTT, agriculture, food technology, tops in ICT, UTT, best in sports, maritime, a place for originality, UTT, our national university, UTT, the National University of Trinidad and Tobago with international reach. Good evening and welcome one and all to another information session with UTT. <clears throat> you are able to learn about our programs um, that we're not only theoretical in nature, but we are also a practical um, sort of university. Um, you're able to get hands-on training. So when you leave here at UTT, you not only have the knowledge, you also have the experience to go into the job market. So our future presentation today is on our ICT program, Information and Communication Technology. Okay, we have a big team today from <laughs> ICT. They're well represented today. Um, firstly, I would like to um, introduce the student recruitment team, which is myself, Janelle Thomas as well as Alana Kamisiong and Oran Hinkson. The featured presentation team today would be represented by um, Ms. Melissa Ramsevere, which is the program leader and senior instructor. We also have Carissa Lee from the, oh, Ms. Ramsevere is from the Diploma in Software and CNT Department. We also have, um, Carissa Lee, which is also a senior instructor, sorry, an instructor too, from the Diploma in Visual Communication and Design. We have Mr. Emil Ramlal, who is the program leader, as well as the senior instructor for the bachelor programs. Um, we have also um, program leader and senior instructor, Ms. Lisa Warwood, for the master's program in ICT, as well as cyber security. So we also have from ad admissions, Dana Placid, and we supposed to have from student accounting, Miss Anissa Ali Ramsaru. So you would be given information on the program, the location, the qualifications, requirements, as well as the registration and application process and the costing of the programs and the payment methods we also have at UTT. But before we begin, we just wanna give you all a promotional video that would showcase all the programs we have at our university. Um, Mr. Hinkson, can you help me out with that, please? Thanks. The University of Trinidad and Tobago provides education which is designed to equip individuals to be future leaders and captains of industry. From science and technology to education, the arts, sports and security, UTT is the place where your dreams are transformed into reality. Do you know we look at the possibilities and really it's on top. Interest is growing among future professionals as to the role of tertiary education in national development. Postgraduate programs in carnival studies, health administration, entrepreneurship and environmental science and management, among others, play a pivotal role in preserving culture, positively impacting healthcare delivery, entrepreneurial endeavors and the environment. 
UTT students are not only exposed to academic instruction, but many take the time to fully immerse themselves in sport, music, art, and other fun and engaging leisure activities. Not just academic enhancement, but also your, your holistic development. Students are exposed to the co-op program where industry experience is gained and students are work ready upon graduation from the university. Seeing some of our students speaking to the professionals and using the language and understanding some of the, the concepts was really, really mind-blowing for me. Building these skills requires the experience, commitment and ability of staff to inspire and lead the student body. Preservation and innovation in the area of culture and the arts have always been the hallmarks of a vibrant and thriving society. So for me and for the team, the faculty that works here at the Academy, those two roles are of key importance. Every individual in the faculty is like very focused on helping you develop as an individual. Maritime studies, performing arts, fashion, food science and technology, sport, public safety and agriculture are all important sectors in Trinidad and Tobago's diversification thrust. UTT brings the best resources and a dedicated cadre of professors and lecturers who continue to prioritize tertiary education within Trinidad and Tobago. The knowledge that I have gathered is tremendous. As the national university UTT will continue to provide quality education for sustainable national growth. Thank you very much, Mr. Hinkson. So from the video, I'm sure persons could see the cross-section of programs we have, as well as how hands-on the programs are. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first presenter, Ms. Melissa Ramsevier from Diploma in Software and CNT Engineering. Welcome, Melissa. Ms. Ramsevier, I believe you are muted. I'm Ms. I'm sorry, thank you. Welcome everyone again to this uh, evening. You take it any moment. Hearing some. Melissa, you're, you're muted. I, I, I did unmute. Yes. We're hearing you now, Melissa, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. And welcome again to this evening's presentation. And thank you for choosing the UTT. Um, I'm here to give you a small presentation on our two diploma programs, diploma in software engineering and a diploma in computer networks and telecoms. Okay, so both of these diploma programs are currently being offered at two campuses, at Port of Spade, the John Donaldson campus, and at San Fernando, Taruba, our manufacturing campus, right? So our diploma programs are in the North and in the South. The length of these programs, full-time, it is two years. Part-time, it is four years and one semester. It is a seven to credit program. Both programs are seven to credits in length. And the objectives are for entry level employment positions as well as for matriculation into our bachelor's program. The entry requirements for both programs, we're asking simply for a minimum of five CXC subjects inclusive of mathematics and English. Those of you who may have done our certificate in applied engineering, provided that you have completed that successfully, you can also go ahead and apply for our diploma program. We also allow that mature entry route, uh, provided you have work experience, et cetera. 
These are the diploma program aims. For the diploma in software engineering, we are providing a platform for employment that utilizes hardware, software, and networking technologies. Graduates will develop a lot of programming skills. We are also looking at database management, software application development, web application development, as well as a bit of application security. Graduates are going to be eligible for direct access into any of UTT's engineering programs, engineering bachelor degree programs. The diploma in CNT, Computer Networks and Telecommunications Engineering, aims to produce graduates who are industry ready and capable of evolving with the changes in information and communications technologies. Students will learn best practices in installation, configuration, and maintenance of communications, networks, and computer devices. Graduates may be eligible for direct access as well into our degree program. So in our diploma programs, we try to focus heavily on practical work, right? Yes, there's a lot of theory, but you have a lot of practical work embedded in our curriculum so that when you are completed, you can find entry level jobs as well as you can decide that you want to work and study, right? As well as you can also decide that you want to open your own business. So we are allowing you many different avenues when you are completed with our diploma program. These are some potential careers that you can have um, after you have completed the diploma in software engineering. So ICT graduates are needed in every single organization. So you are really not limited to a particular company, right? Or a particular field. You are needed everywhere. So we're looking at business systems analysts, software application development, looking at database design, uh, technical support, help desk support, website administration, web development involved in software testing, software project management. You can be a tutor as well. You can be an ICT lab technician. You can be a research assistant. Okay, and of course, like I said, you can become an entrepreneur. You can decide that you want to open your own web development company. That is perfectly possible. Some of the potential careers after you have completed the diploma in CNT. You can have an entry level technician, a job, a computer sales service technician. Um, you can be a network technician at banks, insurance companies, utility companies, universities, um, even at the government. Several of our past students would have applied to government institutions. Um, you can be an owner or manager of a small computer business and any other entrepreneurial entrepreneurial activity that you may choose to do so why come to UTT right our theory is supplemented by significant hands-on activity right so a lot of lab work as I said as well as there is opportunity for internship you have access to fully equipped labs that complement our course delivery we provide a real world learning experience to all of our students you are industry ready upon your graduation and you also learn certain soft skills you have communication skills you learn a lot of teamwork project management you do presentation skills as well as you are introduced to health safety and environment and i also must say to you that our programs are accredited we have attained institutional accreditation by the ACTT and the diploma programs are also accredited by the Institution of Engineering and Technology, the accrediting body of the United Kingdom. And this ends my presentation um, for the diploma programs. Thank you very much, Melissa, for that informative um, presentation. That making me feel to wind back the clock and go back and start a program. Very exciting program. <laughs> now we would have Ms. Carissa Lee uh, presenting on the Diploma in Visual Communications 
Design Program. Hi, Carissa, welcome. Hi, good day, everyone. Thank you and welcome. So my presentation for this program, the Visual Communications Design Program, will take the form of a, a very short video, which would give you as a prospective student a better idea of some of the courses that are involved or are part of this program. The Diploma in Visual Communications Design. Here at the University of Trinidad and Tobago, our Visual Communications Design program prepares you to create designs that inform, attract, and educate persons in the world today. Courses covered in our design program include drawing, basic design, illustration, software tools, photography, Videography, Typography, Communication Design, Website Design, effects. Sign up today and visit us online for more information. Welcome to UTT. All right, so just to make one note, that video was produced by one of our students, past students of the program. And lastly, um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Ms. French and I will be happy to answer any questions you all may have at that point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carissa. That gave a better understanding of what your program is about. You know, seeing is believing. Um, now we would move on to uh, Mr. Emil Ramla, the program leader and senior instructor for the bachelor programs. Welcome, Emil. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to attend this very important information session this afternoon. So please permit me to share my screen. Um, are you seeing it by chance? Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we yeah. are. Thank you. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to present the BASC in Computer Engineering. All right. So the BASC in Computer Engineering, like the diploma programs, is accredited by ACTT and also the Institution of Engineering Technology in the UK. The BASC program is offered in two modes, full-time and part-time. Full-time students will take a total of three academic years to complete the program. And if you are a part-time student, four years and one semester or 4.5 academic years to complete the program. All part-time courses are offered between the hours of 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Mondays to Fridays to accommodate all working individuals. The venue of this program, it is offered only at the Point Lisa's campus. Now, the BASC offers three specializations. We have the networking and telecommunication option. We have software engineering option. And then we have the general option, which we classify as overall computer engineering. Now, entry into the BASC 
is if you're coming through the secondary school system, you must enter with A levels, right? Both Cape Unit 1 and Unit 2 subjects. We are mainly looking for mathematics or a science background for entry, or with also Caribbean studies, right? You must also have a minimum of five CXE subjects with your O levels included, or GCO levels. If you decide to come through another route, right? If you have an NEC technician diploma or any of our UTT diplomas, okay? Or you currently possess a BSc natural science degree or an associate degree in the, in the related field that is IT or an advanced diploma in IT, you can also apply for entry into the BSc. Now, a point to note for our diploma students, diploma students will be granted exemptions in certain courses in the BASC, provided that they have a very good grade. And we'll discuss that upon entry into our program. Now, our students have been participating in um, a number of, a number of community and government related, government related Competitions. competitions yeah. One such competition was the IGOV TT Hackathon, which, which was the first ever um, done in 2019, right? And our team, our UTT students came first, right? This group of students are currently working with IGOV TT in the background, quietly implementing their e-government portals, okay? So these are some of the avenues that our graduates have been able to get into. Also, we have students participating in the telecommunications and um, working with the telecommunication and cable providers, right? Such as Flow, Digicel, right? They work the entire, Carib all the Caribbean countries, right? Some, some of them go for training internationally, right? Many of them work within government agencies. Some work with devel software development companies, privately, local and international. Some are out their own business owners have their own little companies and some work with business owners privately to develop e-portals or government portals or, or basically e-commerce systems for them. Also, some of them are IT administrators within private companies. So there are a lot of jobs available for our graduates, okay? Um, within the telecommunication um, industry, we have students who are working core backgrounds. So sometimes they are outages and so on. They are engineers. They are the engineers working on site 24 seven, trying to get or maintain our telecommunication services, keeping it running, okay? So this is just a very basic summary of what is offered at the BSC. And I look forward to some of your questions at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emil, for another Great presentation. I know it, it, it going up from here. So one of my favorite peeps at <laughs> UTT. Hi, Lisa. She is now going to um, present on the master's program in ICT as well as cybersecurity. Welcome, Lisa. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and Janelle. Thank you for that um, wonderful introduction. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And of course, you'll let me know if you are seeing it. Yes, we are. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, so I am here to present on the master's program for the Center for ICT. So you would have heard about the diploma, we move from the diploma, we go up to the bachelor's and beyond the bachelor's, you have the opportunity to move to the MSc, the postgraduate programs. Now, let me move this up a bit. Oh, sorry about that. Right. So I'm sure you've, most of you are here because you are interested in the ICT industry, projected to be a $3.2 trillion industry 
by 2025. And of course, that makes everyone smile. I'm sure you've heard the term digital transformation. That's what we've been hearing. If you are reading any articles, looking at videos, you'll hear about digital transformation. And what you will hear about digital transformation is that it is imperative to doing business. And of course, over the past two years, we've kind of been forced into looking into digital transformation within Trinidad and Tobago, as well as the region. Um, so we are forced to investigate and expedite some of the ICT agendas that you may have been hearing. I'm sure you would have heard of some of those terms as well. So because of this focus on digital transformation, of course, we now have to focus on developing our capabilities in this area. So we have to look at how we transition to digital and automated and of course, flexible environments. Now for us to be successful in this, we have to now study these emerging and maturing technologies. And with all of that in mind, we at UTT have these two programs that focus or at least are encouraging the focus in those areas. So we have two programs, one is called the MSc in ICT, and of course the other in the MSc in cybersecurity. So for ICT, we have about three areas that we focus on, uh, which is software engineering, networking and telecommunications engineering, and of course we have a new one called ICT in business and government. So for software engineering, we want to look at things like machine learning, digitization, software development, standards and practices. For networking, well, we're very interested in wireless technology implementations. And of course, for ICD and business and government, we are looking at digitization strategies, digitalization, analytics, and different types of business innovations. Now, the entry requirements for these programs are pretty standard. You need a, a bachelor degree in an approved university and preferably something in computer engineering or computer science, that's for the MSc and ICT. Um, as a reminder, it is a 36 credit program. Now, it is quite unique. So you'll notice that this slide talks about part-time mode and full-time mode. Now the MSc programs run within the evening. It's an evening school. So all classes are going to be from 5.30. But you can engage with the program in two different modes. You can engage in a full-time mode where you do a, a larger set of courses and you finish within one and a half years, hopefully. Or you take, a, you take lighter loads, less courses, and you may finish in 2.5, in two and a half years. You, you do have a little extra time, be, um, generally three years or two years, full-time mode, two years, part-time mode, three years. Mature entry is also a possibility. So for those people who have been working within the industry for many years, um, preferably in a, a management position, and they've been in that management position for a number of years, there, there are possibilities for entering this program as well. So don't count yourself out. We have a few research initiatives that we are looking for with students, at least their interest areas, blockchain technology and architecture, disaster preparedness analysis and statistical sim simulators, artificial, artificial intelligence and machine learning, e-procurement systems, criminal analysis and statistical simulators, cryptocurrency and security. I know lots of people are interested in that these days. Financial analysis and management, biometrics, and even quantum communications. 
Now, the next program, of course, is the MSc in cybersecurity, one that is exciting a lot of people. We have two options in cybersecurity. Um, the first option being the management law and policy. Um, in short, you'll hear students refer to it as MLP. And the area that causes quite a lot of excitement, hacking and crime, cybercrime investigation um, with an acronym of HCI. Of course, we have a few focus areas for the MLP. Um, we're looking at laws, theories, management strategies for HCI, evidence gathering, analysis, and response strategies. This program is a 42 credit program, runs with the same modes, evening classes, full-time mode, part-time mode. There is a little bit of a difference in terms of entry requirements. So this program is actually open to people in science and technical areas, other fields. So um, we do have criminology students, we do have law students, and we are looking at different types of, of students with different degrees, technical degrees that are applicable in the cybersecurity space. Um, it all, of course, you can just contact us and we'll have a little conversation about you know, what your area is and what your interest is. But once you have a degree in those areas and, and it can be approved, you should, have, you should be able to join this program and start your career in cybersecurity. So we do have some focus areas we're looking at. Digital currencies, of course, electronic payment systems, next generation financial systems, cyber autonomy and automation, IoT, cyber physical security, cyber laws and ethics, uh, national security and cyber policies. So the masters is a wonderful place to join if you are interested in researching Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean region and you want to do some studies and help us to develop ourselves in those areas. I look forward to any questions that you will have um, about the Masters in ICT or the Masters in Cybersecurity. Thank you very much, Lisa, for that informative presentation. Um, I'm sure people could agree that the pandemic um, would have made this program even more relevant. Well, all the, the um, um, technology programs very relevant because of what happened when the world sort of shut down. Everything had to be automated and use of technology became more prevalent. Okay, so we would just switch now to a short video. Um, Mr. Hinkson, could you help me with that? Did you know that the University of Trinidad and Tobago offers more than 50 high quality career oriented certificate, diploma, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs in areas ranging from science, engineering and technology to aviation, education, the arts, sports and security. Did you know? Well, now you know. Well, now you know about a lot of ICT programs today, right? So now let's learn about how to apply for these ICT, ICT programs. I'm now calling on Ms. Dana Placid. Welcome. Hi. Hi, good evening. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dana Placid and I am representing the registry arm of the UTT this evening. Uh, at the registry, there are two sects or two arms of the registry. One is admissions and the other one is records. Uh, what we'll be focusing on this evening is actually 
the admissions part, but just for knowledge sake, I'll give you an idea of generally what the registry does. So we would assist you with the application process into the university. Now, application is different from registering into our program. Uh, once registered or once accepted into the university and you have a registered meaning you've signed up for your courses, what we do at the registry is basically we are the gatekeepers of your information. We are a library, but a library specifically for students. Library meaning we keep your information, your bio data name, age, your student ID number. And what we do is that we use that information to assist you in any way possible. On the record side of things, what we do is that we archive all of your information. So for each exam you would have written, um, anything that you would have done, coursework, these things are housed with us. And should you need that information, we would give it to you for various reasons. We are usually the first point of contact um, upon entering into university. And we are literally like your guardian angels. We stay with you throughout the program, assisting you in any way that we possibly can. So should you have any questions, queries about what to do, where to go, who to liaise with, you come to us and we are just about helping you, serving you in the best way possible to make your stint at the university a smooth one. So as I explained, there are two arms of the registry. That will be the admissions section and the record section. So what we're going to do this evening is that I'm going to show you a video as to what the application process looks like. Now, don't be alarmed. Don't have your pen and paper out and take notes. It's a video and we'll be more than happy to send you to the website where you could always go back at your own time and fill it out. So if you need to apply, you could have the screen open and you go step by step. But I just want to give you an overall idea and picture of what the process looks like and the information you're gonna have to have when you're actually applying for these programs. So let's take a look at that. So here we go. Welcome to UTT Online Application. To get started, go to UTT main website. When the page is loaded, click apply from the main menu. Carefully read the application process before proceeding. For further assistance you can email the student recruitment department. On the right, you can view our fees, payment plan, academic calendar, application, and program information sheets for both undergraduate and postgraduate programs. You can select your program from the list provided or you can filter by level, intake and program area. When the program is selected, you can read the program's description, program venue, entry requirements, and career opportunities. To apply, click the online application form. When the page opens you can view our application options. Select one that is appropriate for you. If you have already completed an application and wish to continue, enter your key if not click start here for a new application. Read the following instructions and complete all required fields based on the requirements for your program. Please use the next button and not your web browser arrows when moving pages. On page 1, enter your general information. On page 2, enter your address information. On page 3, enter your first and second program of interest. On page 4, enter your CSEC, 
O-Level qualifications. If you are awaiting results enter your subject and select awaiting results. On page 5, enter your CAPE A level qualifications. On page 6, you can enter any other academic qualifications. On page 7, you can enter any relevant work experience as well as two references. On page 8, please select which method you will use to fund your tuition. On page 9, please read all the information carefully. For applicants who are waiting for results please enter your candidate number. Click next to continue. Review your application and update any fields that are missing. Enter your email address for your confirmation email and then click Submit. And that's it. Your application was successfully submitted. Thank you for choosing UTT. And I'm back. So I think one of the really good things that we offer at UTT, especially for those who are awaiting CXC results or CAPE results is that you do have the option to still apply, uh, but you say that, listen, I want to come, I'm interested, but I'm awaiting results. I think it's better that you have half a foot in the door than none at all. So I think that gives you a little edge uh, over the competitors that we have. And uh, I am actually, um, somewhat responsible or oversee some of the programs in ICT. So I do look forward to lazing with you all in the future. Feel free to contact me for anything that you may need and I'd be able to assist you or redirect you to where it is you need to go. So I look forward to seeing majority of you all in the new upcoming academic year and apply. Bye. Thank you very much, Dana. Um, for those who are thinking about applying, um, this was just a demonstration of how, how easy it is to um, go onto the website and put in an application. And as she said, even though you're awaiting results, still apply and get your foot in the door so you don't have to be rushing with the other persons when but they will, receive results. What yeah? I will do is I'll copy and paste a link of the video into the chat so uh, the participants could feel free to go back and peruse it at their leisure. Great. We'll also put it up on the screen so that who live streaming could also see it. Um, next, we're going to have Miss Anissa Ali Ramsrup from the Student Accounting Department with the information on the costing of the program. Hi, Anissa, welcome. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, I just wanted to do a short presentation. So student accounting deals with anything concerning students, uh, balances, tuition, um, if you want certain letters concerning your tuition, you can contact us. Um, our email address is stuacctqueries at utt.edu.tt. Our telephone number is 642-8888, extension 32567. Registration fees are $600. It is due about now, and it runs from September 2022 to August 2023. Um, the cost of some of the programs that were mentioned previously, um, the diploma is 36000 
the Bachelor of Applied Science, it's 48,000. The Master's, 24,000. Tuition can be paid by students being self-funded, gate or other sponsored. Self-funded students, they receive 15% discounts. One, once you are a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, you get 15% discount. Payments are due at the beginning of each semester. Um, we have several UTT endorsed payment options. For example, we have a payment plan that is run by UTT. There's the Financial Assistance Studies Program, the Higher Education Loan Program. Additionally, you can get loans from several credit unions. If you are going through the route of GATE, just remember that GATE only funds one undergraduate. So if you would have received GATE previously, well, then you would not be entitled to GATE, um, and GATE does not fund postgrad. To apply for GATE, you would need to visit GATE website, which is www.e-gate.gov.tt. If it is your sponsored students, you would need a copy, we would need, sorry, a copy of your sponsorship letter. Additionally, all payments to UTT can be made at UTT's bank account. For citizens, account number 1501631, or you can do transfers to UTT's bank. Additionally, you can pay via credit card on your portal. Remember, all payments should be uploaded on the portal for us to validate that the payment was made by the student. Um, it also helps us to identify and apply the payments correctly. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anissa, for giving us that information. Um, as you all can see, our programs are very affordable. If you do a comparison to the other universities um, abroad as well as locally, you can see that all our programs are very affordable. As she said, once you're self-funding, you also get a 15% discount on the program. You have the payment plans, so it is very manageable. Yeah. Um, now that we had all our presentations, we will now like to open the floor for questions. I see in the chat we have many questions. So as the presentations was going on, persons were sending questions. Um, let me see where to start from. Okay, so we had a question. Um, since there are two semesters annually, is the co-op program conducted during the third semester, which is the summer semester? And you all could explain that we have a two semester system here as well. So somebody from the department want to take that question? Okay, good evening again, everyone. So yes, um, it is a two semester system. So the diploma in CNT has that internship program. So yes, as far as I'm aware, currently it is being offered in that third semester. Yes. Thank you, Melissa. Um, another question, what is the total cost for each IT diploma? Are there any scholarships? So they would have seen the prices, um, the fees on that presentation just now from student accounting, but can somebody save their scholarships? I'm, I'm not aware of any scholarships for the diploma program. No. Thank you. Um, another question. For the bachelors in computer science can graduate of the NESC IT networking specialist diploma gain entry. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, once you have a diploma from any of the institutions within Trinidad and Tobago, you can apply for entry into the BASC in computer engineering. Um, during 
during your application process, please upload a copy of your student transcript when applying. Thank you, Emil. Um, someone asked, what is the duration of the visual communication program? The visual communications design program is traditionally two years full-time and three years part-time. Thank you again, Carissa. Um, we have three questions coming from Mr. Vasquez. Are classes fully online or strictly in person from Monday to Friday, 5 to 9 p.m., or is there blended learning? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, with respect to the BAC in computer engineering, um, we are looking at um, implementing a what we call a blending approach in delivering our courses come September 2022. Now, this blended approach, we will look at physical labs because there must be hands-on along with the online theory. Um, when it comes to evaluations, there may be in certain courses, there may be what we call face-to-face -face exams in an exam type condition. Okay. A second question. Um, uh, so that would be the same thing. For, go ahead, Melissa. So now we're going to program. This is similar as well to the bachelor's. Students will have to come in for labs, as well as all assessments will have to be done face to face, which includes quizzes and final examinations. Okay. Carissa, same thing in your department, right? Yes. Okay. Um, he also asks, are there preset scheduled dates set for labs? If yes, what are the dates and times for labs? Or can students choose when they can do their labs to be more convenient? Coming back to um, that question, with respect to labs and the way the course is run, it depends on the individual instructor. What they do is they have what we call a course map that specifies the dates and exactly what is going to happen on those dates on the timetable, on the timetable scheduled. Okay. Um, Melissa, same thing. And Carissa. Yes. Okay, great. And, and the last question he asks, will the bachelors in computer engineering be offered in John D campus to accommodate students in the Port of Spain area? Um, with respect to the BSc in computer engineering, we are actively looking at this scenario, especially for students of the East-West corridor. We are considering what we call labs, offering labs at the John D campus, and the teaching being blended, meaning online. And we are hoping we are hoping to have this sorted out come September. So we are actively looking at this situation. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question from a Ms. Janelle Vasquez. Go ahead. Welcome. Um, hi, good evening. Just to um, ask some further questions on what Mr. Ramral just said. So concerning the classes at Point Lisa starting from 5 to 9, those are online only? It Again, good afternoon. Um, it depends on the type of course that you registered for, right? Now, if the course is offered, there are certain courses, let's say a programming course, you may be given the opportunity once you have the, 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 require, the, the hardware to run the development software. Some of the practice sessions or what we call the tutorial sessions can be done online. There are some individuals who, who may have difficulty in, in, in accessing hardware to run the development software. So therefore, they may be given the opportunity to attend or come in to the campus, the Point Lisa's campus, and do the labs, let's say face-to-face -face with the instructor if they're having difficulty, right? There are other courses, or what we call hardware-type courses, that requires hands-on um, experience, where you must um, do some sort of development or develop something, right? using physical components and many of those components um, are not available in your home so therefore you must attend the labs so again it depends on the type of course that you are registered registered for at that period okay because i'm coming from west Morins, so uh -huh. i tried to make a, a 
decision based on UTT and other competitors as mm-hmm. to how ca- how can I be accommodated? Because right. when mm-hmm. to come, when to leave work at three thirty or four, it's highly unlikely for me to get to Point Lisa at five if some of the classes are not done online and it has to be in person. So right. I'm just trying to understand where UTT can accommodate me and many others who are in the East, West and North Corridor. Yes, that, that's why I said we are, we are actively looking at this scenario or this situation because we also have students, what we call CARICOM nationals, you know, um, who are in their various islands and, and countries and so forth, who are also participating in our program and, and they are request, also requesting the, the online delivery, right? So we are actively looking at this. When can we have a final say as to when all the um, decisions have been made? Because I need to make a decision very quickly. I'm well, sure you understand that that is time sensitive because of finances needed. Okay, I, I understand that. Um, exactly, I can I can give you that um, timeline because because it, it requires a lot. Of, it requires input from from various agencies or, or departments within the institution, not just not just ICT on its own. As well as ACT needs to get involved. So thank you very much, very much, Ms. Um, Vasquez, for your question. Um, I have another question um, from- Hello? Janel? Ms. Thomas, this is um, Dr. Ken Suknan, a, 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 a faculty member. Um, he was just commenting. Oh, he wants to say something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Concerning the, concerning the previous question, mm-hmm. um, currently the bachelors for that particular student, I believe we have more than 60% of the courses currently online, right? So if she, I don't know if that should help her make a decision, right? And we plan to keep a lot of, well, a significant amount blended over you know, for the next two to three years. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Suknanan. Um, Isaiah Lamy, you have a question. Welcome. Hi, good day. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm, I'm here on behalf of my son. He's doing a course right now. Okay. So he's not present. Um, what I would like to ask, so I'm also in school. Now we have first semester, second semester, and we usually do a third semester during the summer. Um, Now, I heard you all mention the summer. What I would like to confirm is that you do one. I mean, due to COVID, my school did not have any summer for the last three summers, including this one. So my question is, is it that summer classes are usually run and is it a continuation of the first two semesters? Thank you for your question. Um, Who would like to take that question? Uh, currently, all programs at UGT are only offering two semesters. Um, our year is simply made up of two semesters. Now we no longer have that third semester offering as we previously did. Um, may I, Go ahead. May I ask a question, please? Mm-hmm. Um, in that light, what happens, just, just as a parent here, what happens to the student within that summer program? Is it that they are given stuff to do? Is it that they go out? And when I say stuff to do, from the perspective of um, an internship or, or something like that, or they just well, don't have to deal with a mommy like me? Because if you have to deal with me, you have to find, I find something for you to do. My son is doing a course. He starts in early July and is going to stop hopefully by next week or so. So. Uh, I think that may be dependent on the program that he's doing. Um, some courses do have internships that are being offered between that May to August period, and others do not. Right? So it's totally dependent upon the uh, program. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Melissa. Last question, ladies and gentlemen. How many courses in total make up your two-year diploma program? That's also dependent on the program because every program has different yeah. credits. The diploma program okay, so has mean, seven to two credits. The bachelor's and master's will have so different the credits. Right, no, so the ICT uh, diploma, I think it's ICT, because um, he's interested in computer engineering, software engineering overall. Okay. Um, so could you tell me how many credits overall there? And it's how many, right, credits. so is it your, right, 72, but does, 
So each subject is worth three credits? No, some are worth three, some are worth four, some are worth five. But essentially, each semester, they would have about five to six courses. It's 20 courses in total. Right. Thank you so very much. That's most important sure. to me. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, um, Brian Collins, welcome. Let's hear your question. Hi, good day. Um, during someone's presentation, they would have mentioned that um, as of now, registration is open um, for the program. Um, my son would have applied earlier in the year. Um, he would have applied with uh, his January um, CXC results, right? But he has he would have done June exam. So so far, um, I guess what they call a, a provisional acceptance. So this registration that does not apply to him now, or only until when his results comes out. Yeah. Okay, so I think we first need to clear up the difference between an application and registration. Registration okay. is once you've been accepted into university, then you can register or enroll for your courses. Where he would be at this point in time is the application phase. So what's yeah. going to take place is that once he has or once he's been given um, his CXC results, if you were to well, if you were to notice that in the application phase, there is a place to enter your um, CXC pin. So basically, what happens is that it gives the university um, the right to get your results instead of him having to come back for us. Okay. So he could list the courses that he has written and say that it's being awaited, provide his number, and once it has been, um, once he has received results. You, the university can access that information or he himself could go back or even write an email and say, listen, these were the results that I would, would have been given and probably attach a slip or something to that effect. Okay, but thanks for that clarification. What I can do is that I will mm. also give an email. I'll write it in the, um, the chat for you. Um, so there is a uh, registration support email where you could feel free to write as well. Should you have more questions? Okay, thanks for that. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Collins, for your question. Um, Ms. Candice Braffitt. Hi, good evening. Sorry, I had to leave for a meeting and I'm just back in the chat. Was the question about scholarships for the IT diplomas answered? Are there any scholarships available? Yes, that was answered. No, they don't have any scholarships for that. Okay. Position. Yeah. Okay, and the cost is in the current booklet? In the fees booklet. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Ms. Kristen Sk Skinner, welcome. Um, hello. hello. I wanted to ask because earlier we were told for the visual communications design program that we will be getting academic adv advising which is supposed to take down later this month. I was asking, is it meant to be physical or will it be online? I can answer that question, Janelle. Uh -huh. Okay, so academic advising for program will be face-to-face -face at the Johnny campus. You heard that, Ms. Gunnar? Yes, I said thank you. Okay, you're welcome. KH, I'm just seeing KH. Hi, I'm just asking on behalf of a friend, mm -hmm. is a diploma in computer network and telecommunications engineering offered in Tobago? And if not, is it offered online? Uh, it is not offered in Tobago, it's offered at the uh, Port of Spain campus, John Donaldson. Could it be accessed online from Tobago? Um, well, some of the courses, like all the other programs, it will be offered blended. Um, so yes, you will have a portion of it being offered online. But they would have to come across to do the labs. Yes, labs and exams, etc. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Quedel Burbal, welcome. You can unmute.
Okay, Mr. Collins, you have another question? Yes, um, just taking a segue of the question that was now asked here to confirm the diploma in computer network and telecom, is it offered only at the John Donaldson Technical Institute or Sando or as well? Yes, it is offered at San Fernando as well. Okay, okay. Thanks very much. Sure. You're welcome. Miss uh, Mami. Just... Okay, sorry. Thank you. Um, again, piggybacking off of the two questions. So just to verify here, classes for the diploma um, software engineering is going to be done blended. Um, labs will be done in school and they're going to be taught at home. Um, yes, so yes, classes are blended. So um, they will have to do their labs and their assessments, meaning their quizzes and um, their final assessments, their final examinations, etc. That will have to be in classes. However, when they um, begin school, each of the individual instructors will let them know exactly when they have to come into their classes face to face. Right, it may not always only be for labs, they may have to come in for uh, tutorials or lecture sessions, etc. So I wouldn't say it's um, cast in stone exactly how it's going to be done, but yes, it is blended. All of our programs are not blended. I, I, as, a, as an adult, I'm pleased to hear that. As a mommy with a child now coming out of secondary school, I'm not happy to hear that. But thank you so very much. Um, I know some people who will be very happy. The Tobago people will be very happy for that. You know, and those persons of the islands, you know, but as a, a mommy in Trinidad, no, I'm not happy for that because I don't think the children function well enough for that. But I am grateful all the same. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lavin. Um, Daniel Charles, welcome. Let's hear your question. You can unmute. Hi, you hear very we're hearing you very softly. Could you speak up? So, um, is there any IT course available? Miss Charles, we're not hearing you properly. Could you type it in the chat and I'll read it out? Okay, if, um, Joshua Lewis, you have a question. Go ahead. Hello, good day. Um, I was inquiring about the software, yeah, the software engineering um, diploma. Is that face to face or is that like only online? So it's it's going to be both face to face and online, right? It's blended. Um. Also, one other thing, the the John D um institute that that is open, right? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um. We have a question from Miss Warwood. Are the classes in Are the classes for masters in cybersecurity fully online, and are classes held every day for part-time students? Uh, well, the model is is the same as the bachelor's and the diploma. Um, you may, we are focused on, on blended learning. Most classes um, are all currently being run online, but some courses may require you to come in for lab work or examinations. Classes are not necessarily every day. It depends on, of course, the mode that you're in, whether it's full-time or part-time. Um, and I mean, you may decide you want to work every day, but you know that is that depends on on the track that you take to complete. Thank you very much, Miss Warwood. Um, Oran, you said Mr. Bulba wrote his question. In the yes, he had um he had some difficulty with his mic. Is it possible for a part-time student of the diploma in software? engineering to transfer from the South Campus to the Port of Spain Campus. Yes, uh, should that student be a current existing student, there is a form to be filled out 
uh, transfer form and ones that has been filled out and signed and submitted to uh, the registry, we would be able to facilitate that for the student. Thank you. Um, Mr. Collins had another question in the chat. If a candidate would have applied for the diploma in CNT with three CXE passes from January and received provisional acceptance as the current registration fee of $600 applies now or after the June CXE results are received and uploaded. Um, I think I could take that question. Um, the registration fee is per academic year, which is um, the beginning in September. So once you pay that $600, it's for the year. So it doesn't matter if um, he applied in January. Once you're starting in September, the $600 fee applies. Um, Masters for Information Technology. What languages would be advancing to do the implementation of more Python and different variation of the coding process for AI learning or machine le learning. How would the implementation of AI or machine learning be used, for example, image processing bots or bots? Okay, I think the question is what kinds of things will be done with machine learning? I think that's the question. That's I, I'm being hoping asked. so. It's in the <laughs> chat. I'm reading from the chats. <laughs> On the languages. Well, at the postgrad level, language language choices are dictated by the instructors. And of course, it depends on what they have carded to review. So whatever research or problems that they are looking at during their courses, they will apply Python or R or Java as they see fit. Um, so it's difficult to say which ones will be covered. The postgrad level is not really a level where you will be taught a specific language because this is a level that encourages a lot of independent study. You are actually more working on problems than you are, you know, being introduced to technology. Um, there is um, image processing actually is a course that is run at the master's level. So is data analytics and machine learning. Um, and of course, if, if you want to know a little bit more, you could always contact me. My information is up on the website. You can WhatsApp me or email. Thank you very much, Ms. Warwood. Um, we have a lot of questions. Let me see if I could get you some more. Um, when I notice that the master's in cybersecurity is not accredited by IET currently, when you do get accreditation, would it apply retroactively to students already in the program? Yes, um, it will be. Um, we are in the process. Um, we are almost to completion with accreditation and yes, it will be retroactive. All students within the program uh, who would have passed with the program will benefit from that accreditation. Great, um, somebody else um, asks on cybersecurity, what would be learned exactly for hacking and cybercrime investigation? Is there any course outline available detailing the content of each course? Um, well, all courses within CICT have course outlines. Once you uh, within once you're registered for courses, you will receive course outlines and content. We don't normally give course outlines before you enter the program, but um, I'm always willing to give you a breakdown of what 
you know, what courses will be covered um, over the period. So you can email me for that. Thank you. Um, Jesse Ramjan would like to know, after completing the diploma in software engineering, will it be recognized at other universities for their bachelor's program in Trinidad? Example, the bachelor's in computer science at UV. Will it allow me entrance into that program? Yes, it will allow you entry into any degree program. Many of our students have gone to UV and other institutions as well, uh, even abroad. So yes, it is recognized. Thank you, Melissa. Um, Kaleen Cardines Mikkel would like to find out, um, to confirm that is the full time of software engineering bachelors is starting at 5 p.m. from Monday to Friday, the same time with part-time. So basically, I think she's asking if the bachelors and the, 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 um, the right. diploma, yeah. Bachelors same and time. diploma? Yeah. All right, so good afternoon again, everyone. So the bachelors, the BAC in computer engineering, what um, majority of the full-time students do a total of five courses per semester, right? Some of the courses may be during the day, daylight hours, and some may be merged with part-time students. That is five to nine. So it will not be Monday to Friday, five to 9 p.m. On average, our part-time students, part-time students normally register for, for three courses, three courses that fall within the five to 9 p.m. So depending on numbers and depending on availability of instructors, some of the courses will be daylight and one or two for full-time students may be with, with the part-time students, 5 to 9 p.m. Okay, thank you, Mr. Emil. Um, another question. If someone was in software engineering, do they have to reapply to get into the bachelor's or would they be able to use the register courses? Uh, no, you will have to reapply to get into the bachelor's. It's a completely new program. So you do have to apply as if you were a new student. Thank you. Uh, another question, what programs, what programs currently offer internships? Which one of the, the programs they ask you? Um, general, current, currently the, the CNT program, there is, in the diploma in CNT, there is a built-in internship in that diploma program, right? But um, throughout any of the UTT programs in ICT, the student could apply and take like a semester or even a year off and say they go in and do an internship or a job and then they could come back. So there's, you know, there's no hard restrictions that you have to finish within, you know, a three year, you know, stipulation and stuff like that. But again, you should um, talk to the, you know, relevant, um, you know, lecturers in the department for further advice on this. Okay. Um, Isaiah, Philip, welcome. Let's hear your question. Hi, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for the presentations every, uh, to all the professionals. Um, just a couple of questions on the diploma in visual communication design. Uh, one is the course count for this diploma, 20 as some of the others. Um, another question I'll ask one time, uh, what are the, specif the specifics of the portfolio that needs to be submitted at application? I have a couple more, but I'll just let you deal with those two. <laughs> so let me answer, um, Isaiah. The first question you asked was regarding mm -hmm. the course count. So we have 22 courses within the program. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your second question, just remind me very quickly what it was, please. 
the the portfolio when I went on right mm -hmm. right so when you apply you have to mm -hmm. go through an interview process that okay. portfolio needs to include drawings I, I'm stressing on drawing because we need to see drawings from live observation drawing is a foundation we have two courses actually in drawing and those are foundation courses so okay. We do not necessarily need to see any um, computer generated work, but we do need to see drawings again from live observation, meaning you have the object or the person in front of you and you draw and you submit those to us and we will evaluate them. Okay, so just, just off of that question, um, would you say that the focus of the diploma leans more towards illustrations and that sort of tough stuff more than? videography, photography, et cetera? So I will not say it leans more to illustration. We have two courses, two levels of illustration. We have a bit of videography as well, but we also have other areas um, which include editorial design. So we're talking about laying out of you know, magazines and other publications, as well mm -hmm. as typography, so it's a wide range. Um, mm -hmm. It's a wide range. So I, I won't say it's mainly illustration, but at the same time, it's it's also not heavily focused on videography. Videography, yeah, videography falls under one of the courses, one of the twenty-two courses. Okay. And illustration, we have two illustration courses. All right. Um, so what what? to successfully navigate the, the diploma, what equipment uh, would a student have to have or have access to on their own outside of the, the university? Okay, um, you will need a computer that mm -hmm. has adequate um, capacity to utilize the Adobe Creative Cloud programs, namely Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign. So those programs are generally large. They, they take quite a bit. Um, outside of that, in the second year of the program, you will need to have a DSLR or digital single lens reflex camera for photography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So based, based on how the courses, from what I've heard, uh, they would be, in terms of the blending of the courses that, they said all the programs have. Um, we would have less online courses with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we will have less online courses. It is a heavily practical program. Most of the courses are practical, and we would mm -hmm. make every effort to ensure that you know we are able to deliver that in the best possible way. Okay. All right. So I I I. I'd ask two more questions and that's it. Um, for, for application, would, if, if you put your undergraduate certification, would that satisf satisfy the application process or would you still need to do your CXC certificate and that kind of thing? Yes, um, your CXC certification or, or um, qualification should be uploaded, however, we do have a mature student entry option. All right, so if, if for example, um, a, an applicant is not able to satisfy the stipulated minimum academic or technical qualities for admissions, then you mm -hmm. can go through the mature student entry route. Okay, all right, uh, last, last, last question, and I, I just seeking some advice here. Um, so I work in the field of communication and I, what, what I want to do is, you know, increase my, the capacity in terms of, you know, graphics, video, photography, et cetera. In that, in that field, would you say that this course is the right course to get that done or should I look at another program that you guys offer? Right, so I would say this, this program is suitable for those areas 
but I would also want to note that you will learn much more than those three areas you mentioned. So it is a, yeah, you would be covering, and I would have mentioned a few others, editorial design, um, corporate identity, all of that is included, typography, et cetera. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sorry for taking so much time, everybody. Thank you very much, Isaiah. I feel like you tried to take over the show here. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Labby, you have one more question for us? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, I started to sound like Isaiah there, right? <laughs> I don't want to talk. That's okay. I am actually, well, we would have actually started to fill out the application form. Um, so you will complete it tonight or tomorrow, God willing. But the question really is, we are applying for the, the, for the diploma program. I understand it is two years. He will be doing full-time. However, how much longer will he have to do? Um, for the degrees, it's an additional two years to complete the degree. So if he jumps, he finishes the diploma two years, and then he wants to continue on to the degree. Is that for two years? That's a great question. Okay. Um, okay. So it depends on the student's performance at the diploma level, right? Um, when a UTT diploma student applies for the degree, they must complete the diploma program. Number one. Number two is they can apply, UTT diploma students can apply for what we call exemptions for certain courses in the degree program, right? Now, it is not what we call a one-to-one -one mapping of diploma courses to degree courses. So this, the, the student's performance in the diploma program is very, very important because majority of the times when we look at exemptions um, for the diploma courses on the degree, the student must have a minimum grade B a minimum grade B in each of the diploma courses for the respective degree course, right? Failure to have that, the student will not be exempted from the degree course and therefore they must do the course, right? It also depends on how much courses the student register for and how, and how they successfully complete those courses to move on to the next level, okay? So many times we have seen students, let's say um, part-time students complete before the four years, one semester um, duration for part-time, okay? But typically, majority of the students complete within three years. This is because there's a final project component within the degree program, and a lot of students like to, um, like to put their best foot forward or, or invest a lot, of, a lot of resources and time to ensure that they complete a, a very good project that in some instances, can be marketed to the general public. Right. So that final project you're speaking about, so would be there literally like, okay, for me, I had to do a research paper, right? So mm -hmm. that would be like their research item that they will have to do as a final item. That's what you're yes. speaking about? Yes, majority right. of the um, times is a research item and a development. They actually develop a prototype. Right. Um, so what is the time frame usually given for that? So for me, for my paper, usually they give you a year. Um, Oh, we didn't take that long, but I'm already finished with that part. So that's why I'm, I'm asking that kind of question now. Okay, so majority of the times um, in our program structure, students are given two semesters to complete okay. their final year project. So one academic year, and mm -hmm. believe it or not, many ask, many um, request more time to complete. Yeah, coming out of it, I, I understand that as well, because I have had those who did, but um, thank you very much. So out of your two years for your, to complete for your degree, once you've done well in the diploma, one of, that, one of those academic year is for that research item you're speaking about, correct? Okay, um, I wouldn't say two years in the degree. I would say three years in the degree, counting, counting the, the, the final year project. Okay, so we have two years of classes and then we have one year for your, paper, for your research item. Yes, one year and you probably have, while doing the project, you may have to do one course in each semester. Okay, understood, understood. Yeah. Um, thank you so very much. No problem. Thank you, Ms. Lamy, for your questions. Um, I'm sure what, other persons benefited from it. Yeah, general, one more thing, um, based sure. on the previous question. If the student chooses to sign up full-time, 
and you know this attend all classes and this devoted to finish it is a possibility he could accomplish it in the two-year bracket because that's all he would be focusing on. Generally, most of our students after the diploma, they choose to get a job and come part-time. That is why they generally rule over the two-year bracket. Okay, well, I'm, I'm hoping that he doesn't have to go that. Mommy is still willing to go the route of, you be the student, I be the parent. I'm giving you what you need to start. So I'm hoping he stays as a student and nobody wants to take him off of my hands. Okay, well, I, I mean, that, that, that's good. You know, you get to finish it. But at the same time, sometimes, you know, if he gets a little like part-time job or something, that might actually boost his career later on. Because one of the downfalls a lot of students face when they finish the degree is that when they apply for jobs with their bachelors, they have, you know, zero work experience. So if he could even get a job part-time just for one semester, you know, at least he would build up that work experience to actually make himself more marketable when he finishes the degree. So it's something you could probably look at. Thank you so very much. I will keep it in mind and take it under consideration. Thank you very, very much for that guidance. Thank you very much, Ms. Lamy, for your questions. I am going to take one more question because the questions, we had a lot of questions today. Um, can you gain entry into the diploma in software engin engineering without CXC mathematics? No, you will not be able to gain entry without CNC math. Math and English are extremely oh, important for entry with three other subjects. Okay, so when you get CXC math, you can reapply. Um, okay. right. Melissa, okay. in, the, in, in the past, UTT used to offer some maths foundation course if it pass it again entry. Is that still available or that's gone? Mm, no, I'm not aware of that. What we do have is the certificates in applied engineering uh, that I know students, I can't remember the exact entry requirements, but if they do not have a full certification, they can apply through that route, the certificates in applied engineering. Am I correct, um, Ms. Thomas? Um, I'm not going to say what, what there is available right now. There's a U-STEP program. I guess when they see your qualifications, if you're missing maths and you have probably four other subjects, they would refer you to the U-STEP program, which gives them a class, or I think it's a semester of CXC mathematics and communication. So there is something available. So we will still encourage them to apply and then they would have to be filtered out of the system and be, be given the option of the U-STEP, which is not um, gate approved. It's supposed to be self-funded. So they would receive the information on that. Yeah? Thank you. Okay, great. Um, we have in the chat all the information on um, the, con the contact information for everyone here from the IT department, as well as um, the student recruitment department. This is also the link on how to apply. So you can take a screenshot of the links. So it's for the um, how to apply tutorial from the registry department, as well as student recruitment, I mean, student accounting, um, email if you have any queries about the tuition fees, the payment plans, and the process, process all together. We also share in our website, www.u.tt.edu.tt, where you can get the program details, the updates, tuition fees, or virtual tours on campuses, and the application form where you can submit one today. We also have the contact information for student recruitment. Um, if you have any questions, um, clarification on anything that you did not hear about today or I didn't um, read your question, my apologies, you can always send your question to us at SRU and we will get it to the relevant person in the department and respond to you. Okay, so we want to thank everyone for 
visiting UTT today. I'm sure the information was well received. Can we get some thumbs up to show that you understood the information? It was clear. Everything was understood so that you can put in a application today if you haven't done that already. Um, these are some of the lecturers and personnel you would be interacting with. So I want to thank the ICT department. We have their support staff here lead, lead, leading um, Sylvia McMillan, um, Shariba, Miss French, and we had the program um, head of the department here as well with us, Mr. U, um, Dr. Yufi Wu. Um, I'm not sure he showed his face today, but we were glad to have him here as well. We want to thank the admissions department. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Wu, how are you? <laughs> thank you. I listen to you. <laughs> we want to also thank um, Dana for gracing us this afternoon with her information and Anissa with the accounting information. Again, we want to thank our guests. We hope that we see you all as um, students this coming semester so that you can be a work ready graduate when you leave the University of Trinidad and Tobago. And thank you again to my colleagues who are always here <laughs> to support. Um, this is the last information I would like to share, which is the other upcoming information sessions um, from next week. We would have um, process engineering, sports, and performing arts. Process engineering is on Monday, Tuesday, sports, and performing arts on Wednesday. And then the following week, we have aviation, education, fashion, and foundation programs. So we still have a lot, a lot of information to share. And we would like you to come and learn, see, tell your friends. Share the live, man. Share the live. You know, UTT is here, and we have great programs to offer. Yeah. Okay, so I want to tell everybody good night. If you're on the road, be safe. We join safely. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent job. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks.